switching lanes now on the Sportsmax Zone as we speed into our track and field segment on this magnificent Monday. Kingston College and Excelsior High retain their respective girls and boys titles at the two-day corporate area championship, which ended at the Ashenheim Stadium at Jamaica College on Saturday. The purple and white of Kingston College emerged as the boys winners for the 10th time in the 11 stagings of the event by finishing 78.5 points ahead of Calabar. Here is their sportsmaster, Richard Smith, after the North Street-based boys hoisted the brand new Dave Myrie Trophy. Well, the team performance over the past the, the two days was very good, very great, I could say. We had a, lot of, we had, um, a little miss up and downs, but we had overcome that, and the boys had a high spirit coming in, especially into the second day, knowing that we had, we had a great lead and overcome opponents. So I could say that we had a good spirit and then this, is help, this would help us basically going into champs, boys and girls championship for the different our title coming in the next two weeks or three weeks or four. Fortis scattery celery non potes. <laughs> Meanwhile, the green and gold Eagles of Excelsior eked out their eighth consecutive girls crown in a title race which came down to the final event as they finished four points clear of Wilmers. Here is the Excelsior sprint coach, Joseph Small. I mean, for the two days, it, was been a, it, it has been a, a hectic two-day championship. We have to see how best we could have managed the athletes. Um, as you can see, it come down to the last race. So it was very hectic for the girls, but they, nevertheless, they come out victorious and win the A title. They also performed well, and I must congrats them. Yeah, let's have a look at the final points tally now for both divisions. Uh, the girls, uh, the Excelsior team coming up with a 4x400 meter victory that gave them the title and are finishing on 360 points, four ahead of Wilmer's girls, 356. Immaculate High in third spot on 298, followed by the Queen School 200, Sandra High 163, and Alpha on 162, Merle Grove, St. Hughes High, Holy Childhood, and Campion College in rounding off the top 10. Here's how the boys tally ended, 452 points, Kingston College on top, Calabar second at 371.5, Jamaica College third, that was their home base, the Ashenheim Stadium, JC there, uh, finishing behind Casey and Calabar. 316.5 points, Excelsior High, 195 points, were fourth, St. George's College fifth on 146 points, Wilmers finished sixth on 140, then Campion College, Holy Trinity, Arden High and Kingston High uh, making up the uh, top 10 spots now. It's uh, momentum for both Kingston College and Excelsior. Ricardo, you were on commentary for both days, given all that happened at the Ashenheim Stadium. Was this, as some people feel, the best corporate era championship of all time? Yeah, I think so, Lance and Mariah. Um, 29 records broken over the two days. Two records equaled, so you could count that as 31. Um, by any stretch of the imagination, that is impressive. Yeah. And the performances were outstanding. We're talking about world-class performances at the under-20 level. Um, and because of that, and when you consider as well that a lot of the track performances and, and especially the sprint performances were done in negative wind reading, um, then it makes it even more significant. Um, and, and, and really, a number of athletes also got pretty close to champs records, which I, which I felt was outstanding as well. So Natrice East, for example, in the Class 3 girls, 200 meters, running 23.27 seconds. That shocked me um, mm -hmm. because in the history of Class 3 girls running, there's Kevona Davis, who is the champs record holder at 23.07. That was 2017. There's Anisha McLaughlin, now will be, who was 23-11 in 2001 mm -hmm. for Homewood Technical. Mm -hmm. And then there's Natrice East at 23-27. What she produced was extremely special on Saturday. So I think when you put everything together, in my opinion, yes, the best corporate area. And then the way the girls' championship finished as well, going down to the final event, I can't recall anything like that happening at corporate before where either the boys or the girls championship race um, or, cha well, yes, championship race, title race, went down to the final event. Yeah, and I heard you mentioning on commentary that the organizers for the, the crescendo of the event could have considered switching and making the girls' event being the final event because 
it was that the entire <laughs> audience was on tenterhooks watching what would happen there because Woolmers needed to win for a tie, but any defeat would mean Excelsior would have won. So the boys' title was already decided with the purpose dominating, and uh, to have the final event being the decider for the girls, the organizers could have made that the, 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 the crescendo event, couldn't they? Yeah, I guess they could have, but it would have required a very late change. And, yes. and in they track didn't expect field, that. Yeah, they didn't expect that. And in track and field, uh, sometimes you don't want to make those late changes. I mean, Hubert pointed out on commentary that it would only be a five or ten minute difference. Um, but athletes warm up for their events at yes. a particular time and so on. And um, the original schedule had the girls going first. And I don't think you can blame them for following through on that. But I don't think it took anything away from what we saw on the girls' side and the way this ended. Um, there were points of this 4x4 four four race where it looked as if Wilmers could create the upset and end in a tie. And let me also say, had Wilmers won the 4x4, four four, although they would have ended in a tie on points, Wilmers would have won the title yes. because the tiebreaker is the number of gold medals won. Mm. And Wilmers are ahead in yes. that category. And so even had, now that they've lost. Yes. Had they been yes. able to yeah. finish in a tie, they would have been I crowned did, champions. Yeah, I didn't realize that. You mentioned Latrice East just now. Yes. And this is something that we have seen over the years in track and field at the high school level in Jamaica, where class three performers outgun or outperform or or produce better performances than class two and, and class one athletes. So we saw Latrice East, her 100 and 200 meter times as a class three winner, was better than the class two and class one winners. So for our viewers, this is a case of 13, 14 year olds running faster than 18, 19 year olds. And as I said, it's, it's something we have seen generally in Jamaica's track and field, but it continues to be something that is, is news catching, isn't it? Or newsworthy. Yeah, so I think Natrice East is special, especially so at 200 meters. Clearly she's very good at 100 meters as well. But I think at 200 meters, she's a real special talent. Um, she is going to be extremely difficult to beat at champs. I like Etienne as well, the Dominican who is now at Edwin Allen High School and started the season at 1170 at Jamaica College and has looked very good throughout the course of the season. The Central Championships um, comes up over the next two days, Tuesday and Wednesday. So it will be interesting to see what Etienne produces. She is chasing the Dominican junior records at both 100 and 200. She already has the 100 record. Whether she'll be able to get the 200 record is another thing. Um, but East is special, lads. Yeah. Last year, she went to the Carifta Games, I think, as a 13-year-old. And I thought she had the goods to win the double there. But unfortunately, also felt she was extremely tired. And you could see that that got the better of her. And young Nabi out of the Bahamas was outstanding. Take nothing away from her in front of her home crowd. Another outstanding talent there as well. And she caught the double. Um, but I would be surprised if Natrice East did not sweep everything before her this year. Yeah, Although there are other quality competitors, I, I think she is such quality right now. She's yeah. going to be tough to beat. Trying to recall those two races in Mah the Bahamas last year, I can't recall Natrice East losing by far in both the 100 and 200. She got yeah. close in at least one of them. I, I, I recall really poor starts at both 100 and 200 meters. Yeah. She tried to run back. But I just think she didn't have the gas. Yes. She didn't have the gas. It was a long season. It was a tough season. Um, she had just come off a, a, a difficult boys and girls championships. And it's always difficult when you're just coming off one major event and then having to travel for another major event. And she was only 13 years old. So I think that showed a year ago. But I think the experience of that plus the fact that she is a much improved athlete, will serve her well. And she'll become a senior, if you will, at the under-17 level at Carifta this yeah. year. Um, so I think all of that will serve her really well. Yeah, what about Michaela Gardner reaching individual 10 gold medals? That's special, you know. That's, That's a extreme. special achievement. Um, before I even talk about her, I, I want you to hear um, how she reacted to the fact that she'd gotten to 10 individual gold medals all time at the corporate championships. Gold medals? Oh my God. I feel so, gee, I feel so, I didn't know what to say, but wow, 10 gold medals. 
as an improvement. Oh my God, I just can't believe. But 10 gold medals means that I put in a lot of work, a lot of work. And this means I'm coming at champs. <laughs> She's coming at champs. Oh my God. <laughs> she, 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 she just couldn't express herself. She was no, it so... was too good. Yeah, it and wasn't... I understand. Yeah, what she has achieved is quite special. Um, so when you think about it, we're not talking about 10 gold medals, including relays. We're talking about 10 individual, individual gold medals. Four times now in her corporate area career, she has done a double. Whether it has been 200, 400, or 100, 200. That is special. And this time around, it was also special because I felt her teammate, Abigail Wolf looked really good in the 200 meters leading up to the final. And she was able to um, hold her off, to shrug off that challenge. Interestingly, Abigail Wolf attended Holy Childhood. She's only just transferred to Wilmers. The last time Abigail Wolf, she's had a lot of injury issues. Um, competed at corporate was in 2020, and she was actually beaten by Michaela Gardner yes. in the 100 meters. Abigail Wolf won the class two 100 meters at Champs in 2023. That was last year. So she is real quality there, yeah. and she joins the Wilmers fold. But Michaela Gardner is special. Her father, um, the late Michael Gardner, ran for Norman Manley at the Issa Boys and Girls Athletic Championships and for Jamaica at the Carifta Games as well. Won a champs gold and silver medal, um, I think it was in the early 2000s. Um, real standout performer for his school at the time. And she has followed that lineage, as well as her younger sister, by the way, who got two silver medals in the class four girls event, Michaela Gardner. So oh. there's Michaela Gardner and there is Michaela Gardner. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, really good talents. And, and just a quick thing to close off this Michaela Gardner thing. She has won now, or she has those 10 corporate area gold, gold. medals mm. individually. At Champs, she has two individual silver medals, mm. 200 in class four, she was beaten by Alana Reed, yes. right. who we know last year <laughs> set records yeah. at 100, um, 1092, Jamaican junior record. And she lost to Alana last year in the 200 meters. She was second behind Alana Reed. So it shows that she has a lot of quality. She can go across 100, 200, 400 meters. I know Hubert feels that she is one of those athletes who can make a successful transition into the senior ranks and we just look forward to see what will happen with her. Yeah, Ricardo, because of uh, the quality of uh, the girls category, mm -hmm. or should I say lack of, from a national perspective. Yes, at the corporate. corporate. Yeah, cor mm -hmm. I'm saying the corporate era championships won't tell us too much about girls and boys championship because Wilmers and um, well, Excelsior are not expected to challenge the the big guns for yeah. the for the for the for the girls title yeah. but in the boys division where KC Calabar and Jamaica College are the top schools they're also the top schools for the all island high yeah. school boys and girls championship so did you see anything over the weekend in the boys championship that would have been an indicator to what could happen at boys and girls champs. Yeah, so before I answer the question on the boys' side, Lance, I just want to take the girls' aspect quickly mm -hmm. because you are right. Wilma's Excelsior won't be contenders for the girls' title at champs. Yes. What they will provide, though, are some of the most outstanding individual performers. Yes. So, yeah. for example, Wilma's will come with a young lady by the name of Tiana Marshall. She will go in the class two 100 hurdles, quite likely in the 100 as well. She won the double at corporate, 11.92 for the 100 meters, but a staggering 13.20 seconds for the 100 hurdles. She is the top athlete in that division in Jamaica for 2024 so far, but she's not even the favorite um, because oh. there are two outstanding athletes out of St. Jago, Brianna Campbell and Brianna Davidson, um, who have done well at the Carifta level as well. And when they come together, I think we're going to get one of the all-time great 
hurdles clashes on the girls' side at Champs. That's one of the events, actually, that I'm looking forward to most at Champs because there is so much quality there. The sprint hurdles for women. The sprint hurdles class Almost two mirroring for what's girls. happening globally because <laughs> the women's sprint hurdles is one of the most unpredictable um, events on the global circuit. There you go, Lance. The, the, she broke on Saturday. So Tiana Marshall on Saturday broke Akira Nugent's oh wow. corporate area record. Mm -hmm. Akira Nugent's champs record is 1291 and still intact. And I think if one of these girls don't break it come champs, they will get really close. And 1291 mm. is serious running yes. um, at this level. So really look forward to that. To the boys now, Lance. What did I see? <laughs> <laughs> One, I saw Kingston College, our favorites, to retain their boys' champs title. Ooh. Two, and JC fans, please forgive me. I see that Jamaica College has a team that can challenge Kingston College. Definitely saw that. I really hope, though, that when they get there and the fire in the belly is required to get the job done, that they will have it on those days. That is what I hope for Jamaica College because if they have that fire that is required to push you over the top and get you to where you want to, which is the title, then I think it's going to be a dream race. Yeah. If they don't have that fire, then like we saw at corporate, Calabar could slip in. And if either of them slip up, Calabar has the potential this year to upset. But I think that is far-fetched because I think the best two teams on the boys' side, Kingston College and Jamaica College. Yeah, but you're doubting Jamaica College's fire because you didn't say it, but I guess it was, it was inferred that Casey has that. You know that already. They always have it. Okay. Yeah. That's the That's one thing you cannot take them. away. Yeah, they yeah. always have that fire. They're always ready for battle. Um, and I can't say that Jamaica College is always ready for battle. Um, mm. And so you're, you're uncertain at times whether they will show up in the way that you know they have the potential to. Mm. And if they do, then you have a terrific race. But if they don't, mm -hmm. then KC could run away with it. Okay, Ricardo, pretty comprehensive in your recap of what happened over the two days, yeah. Friday and Saturday, as the ace and lead commentator at the meet. But is there any other performer or performance that you haven't mentioned so far that you wouldn't want to wrap this segment without mentioning? Yeah, performer, maybe the young man from Excelsior, um, DeMarco Bennett, who won the class two boys 400 meters. He ran 47.43, mm -hmm. which is just off the corporate era record of 47.41. That's really good running in class two. However, problem for him is that the fastest athlete in high school in Jamaica this year at 400 is another class two athlete, Nicole Bramwell out of Calabar, <laughs> who has run 46.75, which is faster than everyone else yeah. um, in high school in Jamaica and this was year. At last year yeah, as well. He is actually the Carifta Carifta reigning Carifta champ under 17 champ. champion. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a fabulous battle when they go head to head. This kid is also good at 400 hurdles. He is the favorite for the 400 hurdles title and Bramwell showed his class at 200 at corporate right. with a 21-45 run in a negative wind. And I also cannot leave Lance without talking about two Bulmers boys. Mm. Um, one, Maria Ross, who everybody who follows um, high school track and field in Jamaica closely knew coming into 2024 that he would start as the sprint double favorite for the class three boys mm -hmm. um, events. 1099 in a negative wind on Friday night um, tells you that he is firing, firing yes. and, and ready to deliver something special. There's a young man from Calabar, Chet Brown, who won the 200 in 2238, who I think will be dangerous. But Ross is still the favorite. And I also have to talk about Gary Card because yes. I saw him <laughs> winning the 200 on Saturday. 20.87, yeah. Lance. Yeah. I'm starting to think that this kid is special. He's had a lot of injury issues over the years. Yeah. He was a star at prep school. Um, lots of injury issues coming through the high school um, circuit. Won a silver medal at Carifter a couple of years ago, 2022, and at Champs in Class 2. 
He started this season by running 60s against the big men at GC Foster College, and I thought he looked really impressive. Um, ran 10.88 for 100 meters in a minus 5.6 meters per second wind mm -hmm. last week, and then he's never been good at 200, and this kid just runs 20.87. And you're like, whoa, coming into the season, I'm stealing 15 seconds. DeAndre Daly, the second fastest Jamaican junior of all time, um, Carifta champion 2022, 10.08 last year, started 2024 as the massive favorite. Then you have Hector from Jamaica College opening at 10.31. Um, Daly opened at 10.40 last week, but then goes to Western Champs this weekend and finishes fourth in the 100 wow. and doesn't make the 200 final and you start wondering what's going on and if he is not up to par then Gary Card could be the man for yeah. the double. A lot of exciting um, storylines. It could be Wolmers. <laughs> it's, it's, listen, high school track and field in, in Jamaica is just too sweet at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think the record says that and tradition um, verifies the point as well. We go to break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Max Zone after this.